Hi, my name is Mary. Today FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is Alkriki and Today FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today FM here in Bath. Today FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks here in Osur. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, 10 tons of spoiled supermarket meat dumped. Cover abuse, major problem in job performance. And later in sports, RKS and ACS reign after day two. The studios of FBC Super, Jackie Spade. More than 10 tons of low-quality meat found being sold in supermarkets around the country has been disposed of by authorities in the past two weeks. The Consumer Council has been working together with municipal councils to inspect supermarkets and identify culprits putting business interests before the health of consumers. Pranita Prakash reports rotten fruit and vegetables were also included in the disposal list. The consumer watchdog is on the hunt to ensure unethical business practices are brought to light and those responsible face the full brunt of the law. Actually, the council have constantly moved around and the constant market surveillance in, co in, in collaboration with the municipal councils have resulted in condemnation of 10.1 tons of meat. The consumer council says most supermarkets are caught engaged in these unscrupulous dealings during random checks. And uh, now our list have expanded. We are also covering service stations. We will be also co very soon going to um, the butchers. The but we are also in discussion with Nasuri and Nasinu Town Council because we have done our surveillances, but we really need their support in condemnation of you know the rotten fruits and vegetables and those meat that is discolored or you know we can say that you know it's not fit for sale. The Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission together with the Health Ministry are also carrying out a joint exercise to monitor the quality of meat, fruits and vegetables. Issue of standards of uh, product, whether it's rotten, it's expired, it's dented, it usually comes under the Food and Safety uh, Unit of Ministry of Health and we're working very closely with them because of course it is a consumer issue. Meanwhile, the Consumer Council confirms 17 complaints have been received against low quality meat while 13 complaints were against rotten fruits and vegetables. The supermarkets found selling low-quality food products and meat have been issued warning letters. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Issues surrounding kava abuse were today brought up by the Minister for Employment, Parvin Kumar, while opening the 2019 World Day of Safety and Health at Work in Lautoka. He revealed that there have been numerous reports to the ministry concerning the excessive consumption of kava. Philippe Naikaso has more. And I'm not saying you people should stop drinking grog. The Minister for Employment has called on employees who consume kava to ensure that it does not affect their productivity level at work. I mean, I'm not saying you people should stop drinking grog, but please do take care when you drink grog. Uh, it has been found now that this is a real issue for us, especially at the workplace. That's what the report that I'm getting from my team. Stress, lack of sleep, alcohol, cyber addiction and gambling were other major factors that contribute to an unhealthy workforce. They represent a major cause of accidents, fatal injuries, disease, absent from works. Government like its tripartite stakeholders, the trade unions and the employer groups has a vested interest in minimizing the effects of an unhealthy and unproductive population. Those present were also reminded to balance work and life. Remember one thing, work can never replace your family. You must have time for your family. And it cost me my health. I am where I am now. I'm happy where I am now. But what was the cost? A closed Talano session for those who attended the opening event has been planned by the minister. Philip and I, Kaso, FBC News. The Employment Minister is reiterating that anyone working on any of the gazetted public holidays is entitled to public holiday pay. Pravin Kumar says the Employment Relations Act clearly states that a worker must be paid in respect of each public holiday for the number of hours which they have worked on that day.
He says anyone that works this Easter weekend, including Good Friday, Easter Saturday and Easter Monday, is entitled to double pay for all three days. However, he says if a worker does not come to work on these days, then they will be paid public holiday pay, but on a single rate. He says a worker must be at work a day before and after the public holiday. However, if they're unable to do so, then they must provide a valid reason or a medical certificate. Fijians living in rural and urban areas can expect more health officers at their nearest centres. This comes as the health ministry embarks on a universal health coverage aimed at ensuring Fijians have access to quality health services without suffering financial hardship. Kelly Bavala reports. With non-communicable diseases on the rise, the health ministry is looking at increasing its outpatient clinics. This is now a program scheduled event and therefore we are bringing uh, the opportunities for our people who have hypertension, diabetes and other NCDs to be seen right at their nearest health center uh, very early on in the piece. And this is our approach to uh, primary health care to universal health coverage and making sure that no Fijian is left behind. Health Minister Dr. Iferemi Wangainambete says they have already deployed specialists from major hospitals to rural communities around the country. Within the Laminosori corridor and also between Singatoka all the way across the other side to Ra, we have specialists from uh, CWM Lotok Hospital, also Lambasa, now doing clinics. The ministry today received NCD monitoring equipment worth $36,000 from the World Health Organization with assistance from the Chinese embassy. Non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular diseases, diabetes and so on are the leading cause of mortality in many Pacific Island countries including Fiji. So to detect those non-communicable diseases at an early stage to prevent them but also to provide the right treatment. Um, you need to have a number of things in place. So things goes from equipment. The minister says the assistance is timely as they now work towards a new direction of improving Fiji's healthcare system. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. The second suspect in the alleged Fiji Airways drug trafficking case made his first appearance in the Lautoka High Court today. Justin Ho is charged with one count of unlawful importation and exportation and one count of unlawful possession, manufacture, cultivation and supply, contrary to the Illicit Drugs Control Act 2004. The defense applied for bail while the prosecution requested time to respond to the application and to file information and disclosures. It is alleged that on December 23, third last year in Nandi, Ho without lawful authority, facilitated in the exporting of two parcels weighing more than two kilograms of cocaine and illicit drugs. He has been further remanded and will reappear next Wednesday. Still to come, mediators meet in Suva. And vendors happy with games response. Details after the break. I'm from Outrigger, Coral Coast, Singatoka. I love listening to Gold FM. All of the classic hits. My name is Salote. I love listening to Gold FM here in Missouri. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, my name is Marida. Gold FM plays the best classics here in Outrigger, Singatoka. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji Mediation Centre had close to a 70% success rate in 2017, while the 2018 statistics is still under review. Mediation Centre Chair Jenny Sito has confirmed a majority of the cases before the centre deal with employment and most are the old cases from the arbitration court. Savara Thumbu reports mediators met today to discuss the promotion of mediation as an alternative to litigation. The mediators gathered to discuss few issues including the success rate of cases and how mediators assist in the mediating disputes. Uh, there's a number of employment cases and these are really relating to the time uh, when we had, um, you know, the, the jurisdiction on the, the labor cases was a bit different. But um, it's, it's more, uh, the, we've had a number of commercial cases and family cases come to mediation. The remaining unsuccessful cases involve parties who do not agree to settle, so they prefer either court or arbitration. Mediation Centre Board member Watisoni Nata says we are also working at resolving pending cases. Also one of the reasons why we call the meeting is we could uh, really support, uh, strengthen the support from the mediators to uh, come on board and 
and take cases and volunteer them, their services to to dispose of the cases that are currently before us. So if, they, if they're interested in volunteering for cases, they can go ahead. Meanwhile, other issues discussed involve the role of lawyers in mediation, the impact of alternative dispute resolution, and easing the court's load. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. While technology has proven to be a beneficial learning tool, at the same time it can have negative impacts on a child's development and quality of life. A study by the United Nations Children's Fund reveals technology changes the way children socialize and interact with others. They do not learn as much from a tablet, from a phone, from a computer as they do from, in, from interaction with the person. Um, and, and studies are very clear about that. So the extent to which you as a parent are able to interact with your child, that your child will learn much more from you than they will from the phone. Smoby says many parents are under the impression that they are not qualified to teach their children and rely on online programs to do the job. The use of technology is associated with children um, not learning. Uh, those critical social skills that they need to survive in school and beyond. For children um, developing a very short attention span. UNICEF's Pacific Chief of Communication Kate Hendridge says technology is becoming an inseparable part of our lives. Technology is everywhere now so we're using it in all areas of life, at work, at school, the internet, it has a role to play. UNICEF is working with the Education Ministry to develop the first animated series called Bullet Kids which aims at improving early learning and development. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. With the excitement of the Coca-Cola games, vendors are making the most of it to earn a few extra dollars outside the national stadium, selling food, merchandise and some even trying to fundraise during this busy time. Catherine Krishna spoke to a few of the sellers and files this report. Lamy Stallion Rugby League members were amongst many seen selling hot dogs outside the stadium today. This year for fundraising for today. Today and tomorrow. Because we're selling one hot dog, it's $3 going to spend it in our training staff and uh, pay uh, everything for our team. Joshua Lemeki, an old scholar of Natambua High School, says he has come with his own designs of school merchandise and sales have been good. We may be expecting around six to seven thousand dollars because like uh, yesterday we bought around six bags and uh, we only left with one bag now, so they're getting it over to, from uh, Lutaka to Suva. Members of Rai Wai Youth Club say they're making the most of the opportunity as some of their unemployed members are now selling and earning money. Just here is the youth of Rai Wai, uh, was unemployed youth, so we came up with this idea just to look for some money so we can cater for our families. So for now we are just selling burgers, hot dogs and so does barbecue and uh, we hope that we will achieve the target that we have targeted on this week. With the last day of competition tomorrow, these vendors hope to earn more money while enjoying the spirit of the largest athletics meet in the country. Catherine Krishna, FBC News. Preparation for the first Today FM Park Jam this year is well underway. Today FM Assistant Program Director Cecilina Vakao says the event is a great opportunity for families, friends, especially students, to wind down after the Coke Games tomorrow afternoon. Vakao says the Park Jam will be filled with continuous entertainment from local artists and dancers and lovely food for everyone to enjoy. The alcohol-free event will also have security for the safety of everyone that will be part of it. The Today FM Park Jam kicks off at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening at the Suva Foreshore. The team and I are actually looking forward to give the public uh, well great live entertainment tomorrow. Remember, we have two uh, well well-known bands, the Sound Waves, the Pacific, Sound Waves of the Pacific. Not only that, we also have the game. Okay, so this is something that people should look forward to. Bring down your friends and family. Okay, we have food stall available. Well, you can just come and unwind with us. Okay, before you head on into the long Easter weekend. Later in sports, Melly will bring you all the action from day two of Coke Games. But first, Rachel is here with business. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening and coming up after the break. Devaluation rumours debunked. An ingrowing Fiji repair of water pipes begin tomorrow. Stay with us.
Hi, I'm Jyotishma. I'm from Singatoka. I love listening to Mirchi FM. Mirchi FM is hot. Singatoka Mirchi FM is number one. I'm Charlene Robert. Mirchi FM rocks in Lambasa. I'm Sonami Nasodi Jackson. Mirchi FM is hot. My name is Raymond Dutt. I'm in Baba Singh Alliance. Mirchi FM is hot in Lambasa. I'm Kritika from Jackson Nasori. I love listening to Mirchi FM here in Nasori. Mirchi FM is hot. Mirchi FM is hot. In business tonight, rumors of a devaluation of the Fijian dollar has been rife recently. However, the governor of the Reserve Bank, Arif Ali, has cleared the air. At the 2019 Business Summit, he refuted the rumors by explaining why devaluation is not an option now or in the foreseeable future. Maggie Boyle reports. Given Fiji's track record of devaluation, the governor says current reserves are ample to tide the economy over. I still have a buffer of very close to 600 million apart from what I have here. So overall what I'm trying to say is that I've got a buffer in excess of a, a billion dollars in foreign reserves well above the three months benchmark that you know, IMF set. Every time we have devalued, our reserves were less than two months of import cover. So if you have to think about a buff, you know, benchmark of two months when we have to do the devalue, we've got about $1.5 billion in excess. The governor also noted that there is economic stability with the current liquidity of $342 million. Liquidity is not at historical lows. Currently liquidity or liquidity last Friday was $340 million, much, much more than ever we ever had. This is the level of liquidity and it's also important to note this is excess liquidity. For organizers of the summit, this was an opportunity to ensure that private sector growth is better enabled. Conducive business environment and our common objective, government and us, we have the common objective of improving business performance for economic growth. The inaugural business summit was organized by the Fiji Chamber of Commerce and Industry and is intended to be an annual event. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Kentucky Finance Limited recorded an increase of 84% in its profit for the nine months ending on March 31st. The net profit recorded is $6.92 million, whereas the group's profit for the same period last year was $3.75 million. Group earnings per share was $0.7.6, cents, up from $0.4.6 cents in the comparable period last year. Net operating income is $17.480 million, compared with $11.7 point seven hundred and seventy nine million the chair says it is pleasing to note that in a tight funding market the group's liquidity grew by 33 percent to 66.7 million on the back of strong term deposit inflow and we now join Sinifa from HFC Bank with the latest from the money markets the main mover this morning was the New Zealand dollar which dipped after their annual consumer price inflation came in well below expectations at just 1.5% for the first quarter, raising odds of an interest rate cut in the coming months. The Aussie dollar took a brief hit yesterday after the Reserve Bank of Australia said it believes a cut in interest rates would be appropriate should inflation stay low and unemployment trend higher. Their currency is sensitive to the economic fortunes of China, Australia's major trading partner. Asian share markets got off to a guarded start today as investors waited anxiously for Chinese data that might show policy stimulus is finally gaining traction in the world's second largest economy. The U.S. dollar index against a basket of six major currencies was steady after gaining 0.1% overnight thanks to the flagging euro. And that's all from HFC Bank for now. Inaka. Thanks, Anifa. Here are today's exchange rates as it was set this morning. The Fiji dollar made gains against the Chinese yuan and the euro. However, it slipped against the strengthening U.S. dollar as well as the Kiwi and Aussie dollars. On to the commodities market, oil prices dropped rather rose 10 cents remaining just above $63 per barrel gold dropped about $10 to $1,275 per ounce and silver was up 4 cents at $14.98 an ounce. And in Goring, Fiji, tonight, the Water Authority will be carrying out repair works to a major leakage along the Vaturu Nangando high-pressure water pipeline at Batiri. 
WEF says the leakage is suspected to have started from the welding joints and has deteriorated, causing it to lose approximately a million litres per day. WEF says they are ready to undertake the partial shutdown at the water treatment plant to carry out the urgent repair works upstream near the Vaturu Dam. WEF is urging Latoka residents to store water as the shutdown period will be effective for six days starting from 10 p.m. tomorrow. The repair works is critical as the leakage has been deteriorating for the past few weeks. And that's a wrap from the business desk. Melly is up next with sports. Good evening in sports tonight. Rundrundru and Rangatu wins blue ribbon races. And Mundre Lange favorite to for tomorrow's 200 meters final. Details coming up. वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू भी सभी जगह मशहूर है रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन सीमा नकाशी से मैं रेडियो फिजी टू पसंद करती हूँ सुनने के लिए रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन मैं हूँ अंकल किंग सिंह टोक टाउन के टैक्सी ड्राइवर देश रग्बी फेम से वैसे रेडियो फिजी टू फेम से रेडियो फिजी टू देश की धड़कन Ratu Kandavu Lebu School and Anida Kumbau School reign supreme in the senior grade 100 meters final at the Coca-Cola Games underway in Suva. Kulinio Rundrundru was the star for RKS clocking 10.64 seconds, beating top bat Nemmani Mundrilangi of Natambu High School. In the girls' grade, Serenir Rangatu of ACS took the gold medal to Sawani in a time of 12.2 seconds. Here are the two races. Barabilala of Jasper is the outright favorite. Then there's Jesse Bacaloloma. A good start, I think, from Brailini as she pulls up ahead and then picks it up. This is a close one to call. It's uh, Serenia Rangatu in front. Brailin trying to put the pressure, but it's ACS that will take the gold out. Serenia Rangatu, they breed sprinters in Bua. Medalist in the intermediate grade, in the senior grade this year, and a good start by Nemani Mundrelangi. He gets out quickly. The challenge is out from Ratu Kandavu Levu School Ran Rundru is Ran Rundru just in front Ran Rundru wins gold for RKS Colinio Ran Rundru I just want to thank the Lord for his protection and all our supporters who turn out in numbers today not forgetting my family and all the RKS students who are cheering on the embankment and grandstand this win is for you guys and now we join Kurei Tandulala who is, who is at the ANZ Stadium Kure, what has been some of the highlights of day one and what can we look forward to tomorrow? Yes, Meli, it was an electrifying day two of the Fiji finals here at the ANZ Stadium 2019 Coca-Cola Games. Now, there's a lot of interesting development today. At the end of day two, Ratu Kandavu Levu is leading the boys category with eight golds, six silver and four bronze. And of course, Maris Brothers High School in second place with four golds, 11 silver and four bronze. And in the third place, Suva Grammar School with four golds, two silver and three bronze. In the girls division, the defending champion, ACS, is leading with seven golds. 8 silver and 6 bronze. St. Joseph Secondary School in 2nd place with 5 golds, 2 silver and 4 bronze. And of course, Jasper William keeping the hope of the Western Division lead with 3 golds, 4 silver and 3 bronze. Now, some of the highlights that we witnessed today, Yashnil Karan again won his 2nd gold medal today in the 3,000 meter senior boys race. He, def he earlier won his 1st gold, gold medal yesterday in the 1,500 meter race. Senior boys upsetting the favorite Maris Brothers High School's Petero Vetang and another interesting development was in the intermediate girls high jump where Chantel Lockington of Xavier College set a new record of 1.68 meters in the intermediate girls high jump. She broke the record set in 2017 by Diyama Maramani a record of uh, Holy Cross, a record of 1.65 meters. And another interesting point, uh, thing, story that we come across today was Kayava Francis of Suva Grammar School in the intermediate boys long jump. He recorded a distance of 1.92 meters to take gold. And now you might be asking what is so interesting of Kayava about Kayava? Uh, Kayava is suffering from rheumatic disease, heart disease rather, and he says to the president that no matter what illness, if you're suffering from, anything can happen and anything is possible. And of course, the main event that everybody was looking forward to, day two of the Fiji finals, was the Blue Ribbon event. And in the girls' division, ACS uh, was crowned the new... Uh, 
new champion in the Blue Ribbon events, Serenia Rangatu, upsetting Salotim Baravlala of Jespa and Fane Sovakadolo of Suvo Grammar School. And in the boys' division, Colinio Ranrunru crowned the new champion in the boys' 100 meter senior race, uh, upsetting Anatambos High School, who clocked the fastest time in yesterday's heats. His name was Nemani Mundrilangi, and of course, Mbosoka of Ratukandevulevu took gold. Now, at the end of day two, no school taking a dominant lead with 37 gold medals are for grab tomorrow. It's still anybody's race and all will be revealed tomorrow whether Ratukanda Vulevu and ACS will be able to defend their title or whether a new school will be crowned 2019 champion of the Coca-Cola Games. All will be revealed tomorrow. Meli. Thanks so much for the update, Kuroi. National Karan of Tavua College won his second gold medal in the 3,000 meters boys event this morning. Karan dominated the entire race, pulling up in the second round of the 300 meters, leading all the way till the final lap. Here is the last 100 meter lap of the race. Well, it's the end. Yashnil Karan hits the home straight. Yashnil Karan. Well, that's a sprint finish. Tavua College. Yashnil Karan. Back to back gold medals in the boys' category. And uh, he comes across, he finishes the race in about 9 minutes and 18 seconds or so. Ratu Kandavulevu schools, Joshua Koro and Nicola Renge of St. John's College and a tied for a gold medal each in the senior boys 400 meters final. This after both were judged to have crossed the finish line simultaneously. Here is the action. They're out here the fastest time and out they come. She comes out really slowly on that occasion. But she starts to pick up the momentum right on lane 80. Salieto Modiwasa, Dudley High School. And ACS knows that they can get this one. And uh, they uh, seem to be lacking quite behind uh, the 800 meter gold medalist. Melayer Alanga Kali of Masangam comes out. She seems to be striding well. She knows that it is now or never. She can have a double celebration today if he gets another gold medal from these uh, 400 meters. Uh, you can really see that she's struggling. And. Uh, Basangam Melayer Langakali is doing great once again, but ACS uh, coming down on the uh, inside lane. It will be down to the last 100 meters. Uh, what will happen here? Can she maintain the momentum? It's a 15 meter gap. It's a beautiful run. She's doing a level best, just for trying to catch up as well. Will she be able to maintain that just by coming in really quickly? Another 25 meters to go. It is between Jasper and Basangam. And Basangam in the full uh, uh, the form of. This time they're up and running and uh, Martini Komba from Morris Brothers High School as they push forward inside and coming in close is uh, Nayala Secondary School on the uh, bend and we can see that Toeli Rovula looks a bit tired here and on the outside Nayala Secondary School this, uh, uh, Mesake Dolai Sao has uh, pushed forward ahead of the uh, Ratu Kandavulevu boys and on the outside they take coming in is uh, Ratu Navula's uh, Panapasa Tawakede but it's going to be a close race here now as we take the bend here Lepani Mbati from uh, but on the outside is Arceus comes in inside racing through is uh, Ratu Kandavulevu schools uh, but coming through is St. John, rather St. John's College's Nicola Rengue from St. John's College. will. Basangam College's Melaya Ralangakali created a major upset in the 800 meters girls senior grade final as she ran her way to the, to the gold medal. Lambalas was a class act as she outran bigger schools in the final. Here is the action. Basangam College Melaya. Ralanga Kali, 200 meters to go, turns the bend well. She's got a great lead. She's got a handy lead, a cushion that uh, will be very hard to uh, pop. There's, here comes Malaya Ralanga Kali of Basangam College. She's good. She looks steady. She turns the bend. She's into the home straight, but here comes Andy Dakambau School. Andy Dakambau School, can they put the pressure on with about 50 meters to go? Basangam College will take the senior girls 800 meters. Basangam College, Malaya Ralanga Kali, Vani Loloma will have to settle for the silver medal for Andy Dakambau School, the girl from. Uh, Natuvu in Savu Savu and uh, Basangam College 
Well, she gave everything that she had there. Malaya Ralanga Kali, Ba Sangam College, Ba, a couple of gold medals in the girls' 800 meters. Brilliant work by the girls. Nemani Mundre Langi continues to burn the ANZ tracks with his impressive showing at the Games. The Natambu High School sprinter star clicked the fastest time in the 200 meters senior boys hits in a time of 22.22 seconds. In the girls' grade, Andy Dakumbao School's Serenia Rangatu was the fastest in 25.53 seconds, followed by Jasper Williams High School runner Vika Mbavuli, who clocked 26.49 seconds. Uh, Serenia won the silver medal last year when these two girls were in the intermediate grade. They've uh, graduated into the senior grade. First year senior for uh, these girls and uh, the battle will be on. Sure. So who will take it out this year? Will it be ACS or Maravilala now running for Jasper? They turn around here, Salote Maravilala. She turns the bend well, but the ACS girl uh, Rangatu comes over the shoulder of uh, Maravilala. Serenia Rangatu of Adidakambo School. She uh, shows her dominance as she comes into the home straight. Good running style, both runners. It's ACS in front of Jasper. ACS will take it through. Both uh, will uh, qualify for the final. One and two qualify for the final. So Andy Dakambao School, Serenia Rangatu, first place in the senior girls' uh, final heat of the 200 meters uh, in the senior boys' 200 meters. He must win this heat or get ranked in the next four best times if uh, he misses out on first place. Sure. Number lane number six. Watch out for Nemani Mundrelangi and uh, 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 out quickly that time. Natambua. Well, look at him. He's a flyer. He comes around the bend. Look at his style. Everyone left chasing him. He hits the front, uh, uh, the home straight well, in right in front, into the lead. And uh, Nemani Mundrelangi. Very good work by Nemani Mundrelangi. Even our cameraman got so excited that uh, he lost track of the race. But Nemani Mundrelangi, Natambua High School. What a finish. Mark his name. He can do a double in the sprints. 100 and 200. He's got style. Look at his belt. He looks such a, uh, uh, in good frame. Uh, a good sprinter. And he will be the one to look out for. In today's play of the day, Nraketi's secondary school's Ashbal Ali came from behind to beat George Koreinasau from Marist in the last few centimeters at the tape in the sub junior boys 800 meters final to claim gold take a look at the last 100 meter lap back but it is Xavier Collins at the moment Isaac Mbonave Indongo and it's Marist George Corona Sao will make his way can the challenge be provided by Xavier Collins Isaac Mbonave Indongo but oh my word Isaac Mbonave Indongo of Xavier Collins has one goal, yes, it is. Well, it is Asbal Ali, apologies of Nreketi High School. Right at the finish, right at the finish line, Nreketi High School. Asbal Ali wins goal and second is Marish Brothers High School. What a run, Nreketi High School. That's it from Sports Tonight. Join Angie later on in weather and in the world of the weird and the wonderful. We share a story of how a dog was rescued after he was found swimming 136 miles from shore. Details after the break. Bula, never go Malakai Leloma, go in Nakas, on the water wrong and Bula Fib, Nambandu, I am a serie. Oh, yeah, over six eyes, I am Bassa. We have the Tele Tainu Warrong in Nambula FM, number 2 and Serie. We have the Tumeli, Akwa Natao no Hinatoka, Tele Takina Navarrong in Nambula FM, number 2 and Serie. We have the Tumeli, Akwa Natao no Hinatoka, Tele Takina Navarrong in Nambula FM, number 2 and Serie. We have the Tumeli, Akwa Natao no Hinatoka, Kito and the Tele Takina Nambula FM, number 2 and Serie. Nambula FM, number 2 and Serie. We finally know a lot more about Disney's new streaming service, Disney Plus. It's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Such a lovely day with cool winds blowing by and the nights are getting cooler, so keep warm. 
The heavy rain is still pretty much active for parts of Fiji, but it's not stopping the bubbly vibes of the core games happening at ANZ Stadium. Now taking a look in the west, quite mild scattered clouds and showers will be around. Eastwards from Pak Habarisuva, quite cool with heavy showers expected later tonight. And up north, quite mild with showers also expected, rainy time again. At sea, it's still winds 20 to 25 knots, very rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 11.08 p.m. and high tide at 5.25 a.m. Sunrise at 6.16. For tomorrow, I'm feeling all the excitement for the long Easter holidays already, but I'm afraid showers will still roll in. Tomorrow's temps, major centres will be cool at low 30s. And looking further on to Good Friday, well, there is more showers coming our way. Let's prepare well for that. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, should Thabua College gold medalist Yashnil Karan be included in Team Fiji for the Pacific Games in Samoa in July? Yes, uh, I think he should be representing uh, Fiji in the South Pacific Games. Yes, I think Karan should represent Fiji because he's really done well. Even though he's a new athlete, he has managed to scoop two gold medals. Of course, yes. Of course, because he beat the one that's supposed to go and represent Fiji. And he beat him. So he beat him in 1,500. The 3,000 again this morning. He won it. And he's supposed to take that uh, opportunity to, to go to the South Pacific game. I think uh, Karan has performed well yesterday and today. And if he's given a chance, he can perform well in the Pacific Games. Yeah, he should because of his uh, incredible performances today. And he's also a new athlete, so I think he should. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, it's a life-saving stroke of luck for a pup that was lost 136 miles from a southern Thailand shore. Workers on an oil rig happened to spot the exhausted dog floating in the sea and pulled him to safety using a rope. Recapping the main stories for tonight, 10 tons of spoiled supermarket meat dumped, cover abuse, major problem in job performance, and RKS and ACS reign after day two of Co Games. Now for these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. To our poll question segment, we're asking, should secondary school athletes be given more support? Visit our FBC website to answer. Our shot of the day sent in by Sovito Umbitu of Taviuni. A picture of rough seas this morning overlooking cloudy and rainy conditions experienced in Vanua Levu. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. You can also follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was the FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, good night. Hi, my name is Mary. Today, FM plays the best music in Lambasa. Today, FM rocks. My name is Thomas. I'm here in Nakasi and I like to listen to Today, FM because it's rocks. And my name is Milinia. Today, FM rocks here in Singatoka. My name is El Tripi and Today, FM rocks here in Tawa. My name is Mary Jane. I love listening to Today, FM here in Bar. Today, FM rocks. My name is Ilay Tiambal and I love listening to Today, FM. Today, FM rocks here in Osuri. Today's hit music on Today FM.